Hallelujah. Jesus says, I'm a God at hand. I'm not Hello, everyone. Pastor Harris, we continue now with part six, uh, doing good things in negative times. And we're looking at Jesus himself as our example, fulfilling scripture. The Gospel of John, chapter five. And we pick the story up with verse nine. It says, and immediately the man was made whole. This is after Jesus told him to take up your bed and walk. And he walked, he was healed, and the same day was the Sabbath. Okay, it continues. The Jews, therefore, said unto him that was healed, it is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. The man that was healed answered them, he that made me whole, the same said, take unto me, take up my bed and walk. Now, you got to put yourself in this man's shoes. Remember, 38 years he was laid up. Jesus comes and heals him, tells him to, to take up his bed and walk. And now you jokers going to come and tell me to put my bed down and get back down on that floor? No, come on, man. <laughs> Shoot. I'm healed. I'm whole. I don't care what day of the week it was. I don't care what's the sign, but that man told me to get up, and I got up. And y'all going to complain about the Sabbath. <laughs> so, so you have these folks criticizing this man. That man don't care. You understand? You put yourself in his shoes. He is whole. A good thing was done during very negative times in the ministry of Jesus. So we come over here to wrap this up. Verses 15 and 16. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him whole because the Jews are going crazy over this man carrying his bed on the Sabbath. Okay, in verse 16, and therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus. Negative times. The Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to slay him. Greek word kill Secondary word, murder him. Because why did they want to slay, kill, murder Jesus? Quote, because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Wow. Murder, kill, slay, negative times. So I want you to look at this and understand that even though persecution came, he still did good. Even though they wanted to kill him, he still did good. All right. The price for doing good. Sometimes, man, it, it can be wow. It, it, can, it can be tough. But we always know that the Lord has your back. Okay. He has your back. I cannot tell you the persecution, the number of things that I went through in building ministry, and the Lord have my back. All righty? So, as you have opportunity, do good. Okay? When it's in your power, do good. And especially during these times, a kind word, a smile on your face, uh, being consciously aware of your surroundings, knowing and understanding that I have the power to be a blessing. And with that, then I can give, and I know that the Lord is going to take care of me. All righty, so fulfill this scripture. And while you're doing that, you are also walking in the footsteps of Jesus. Because he went through it. And in our final message uh, next week in part seven, we're going to give another example of Jesus preaching and teaching the word, doing good, and the, the, the persecution that came after him. And remember, the bottom line is in the physical, natural realm, Jesus was crucified because he was doing good. He was demonstrating the love of God. He was doing miracles. He gave people hope. He encouraged folks. And it was just too much 
for the religious leaders at the time. It was too much for the Sanhedrin. It was, it was just too much for them. And, of course, they said, this guy's got to go. And you know the story. They approached Judas and Judas' bed and the 30 pieces of silver, and the rest is history. But thank God that Christ set the example of doing good things in negative times. Blessing, we'll see you for uh, part seven next week. Woo! We're having church! Say that.